seconds. Love line may contain sexually oriented content. 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 Listener discretion is advised. One. Go. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Love line. Coast to coast. Hey, everybody. Love line. I'm Adam Farola. That is Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician and addiction medicine specialist. <laughs> and another, and a, you know, me and my family, they're uh, classics. They're huge fans of the show. Fans. Yeah, I was just oh, on, yeah. The, I was on the phone with my dad about three minutes ago on my cell phone, yeah. and he, at a certain point, he pauses. He goes, What time is it? I goes, A couple minutes to 10. He goes, are you going to bed? No, I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> that was about two years ago. <laughs> this time it's, uh, doesn't the show start at 9.30? <laughs> you know, many people would think he must live in a place that doesn't get the show. No. No. He lives in a place where the show's been on the longest. Los Angeles. Mm. Yeah. Jay Blumenfeld is our guest tonight. He is, uh, are you a documentary filmmaker? I am. I, I I do a lot, but uh, producing direct documentaries is something I do. I uh, I happen to uh, love that uh, format. By the way, it is uh, it is it is about the it's some I can watch about ninety five percent of documentaries, but I can only watch about five percent of feature films, maybe less. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I, I I no matter what the topics it are, and especially stuff that's on uh, HBO, I just find it uh, provocative and fascinating. And uh, Jay is doing a uh, documentary on uh, ecstasy, and uh, that's going to premiere uh, April 28th, which is, when is that? A couple days? That's this Sunday night. This wow. Sunday night on HBO. I, I, will, uh, I will TiVo that. <clears throat> so tell us how the uh, documentary goes. It started as a general doc about ecstasy. We're going to call it Generation Ecstasy and just talk to a bunch of different types of people about what it's like to take ecstasy, why they take it, what the whole scene's about. We ended up following one family up in Northern California, and we met um, a dad mm-hmm. who was the son of a preacher, never had had a drink, never had cursed. This up was in, Scott, right? This was Scott, um, up until about um, a couple weeks before we met him. We met him the first time he was doing ecstasy at a rave with his 19-year-old son. You met him the, the, the first we, time he'd basically taken any we, drug. We were at a rave just shooting, talking to he people. must and have been a drinker. He was. He said he hadn't taken a drink. He hadn't done anything his whole life. He was. He was the perfect small town guy. Hmm. All right. So now he's with his 19 year old son, and he's and taking X. He at a tries rave. it, and right. he's pretty happy that night. Right. And sort of falls in love with the drug as as we meet him and we follow him for about six months, hmm. and becomes. He goes to raves every weekend. At all the kids up north at the raves call him Raver Dad. He becomes a character. Starts wearing baggy pants and bright orange shirts and just falls in love with the whole thing and then he's got a 12 year old and 15 year old kid and they sort of he he was extolling the virtues of ecstasy to them because he just he'd never felt anything like this they end up doing it with him at a party Mm. his the his ex-wife finds out she calls the cops they search his apartment he goes to jail the family basically falls apart before her very eyes and then sort of comes back together. Hmm. So it's sort of a happy ending. Hmm. Wow. Did, so did he keep doing drugs? Um, He's dead now, but yeah. <laughs> the reviews have been good. <laughs> HBO's happy well, with follow the final six feet cut. under. I mean, it's, <laughs> and it's let's yeah, be fair. It's got a good lead in. <laughs> <laughs> well, you want to keep the thematic thread going there, right? Yeah. right. A- HBO likes likes their documentaries dark but truthful. Yeah, I was just watching uh, Hookers on the Verge. That's dark and truthful. Yeah, you ever see that, Drew? Uh-uh. Uh, it, it's, uh, well, first off, it's amazing <laughs> at what you can do because you're calling it a documentary that you couldn't do. I mean, it's basically, uh, they, they take hookers and they put, uh, they mic them up and, uh, they, you know, they send them, you know, they, I mean, these are street walkers. They're not, uh, they're not plants, mm-hmm. but they mic them up and they go into these cars and they're sitting there and they're talking to the Johns and they're, you're hearing oral sex. You're seeing heads bobbing up and down the car shake and shake. Yeah. yeah. I always, uh, I, I always, <laughs> you know, these Johns, you know, the guys, uh, half of them are just driving like a Ford Taurus or a Ford Explorer or something, you know, mm-hmm. they blur out the license plate, but if they're old ladies home watching, they see the beige. 93 Taurus 
and uh, they hear the familiar voice coming from the passenger seat, and they do do a little of that math with the uh, you know working late nights. They, they put it together pretty quick. There's wow. a little Grateful Dead sticker on the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's got the dancing bear and the uh, Sierra Club take a hike to hell that she uh, remembers very well. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like hey, all that. Actually, we do it with the man show once in a while, too. A lot of that, we're going to disguise you. It's kind of like, it's more like we're not going to get sued, but they're still going to know who you are. <laughs> oh, my God. That's basically what that is. Well, now, Scott, though, you don't start doing drugs and then stop. So what happened to Scott? Well, um, he's sort of mellowed out. I mean, this this all happened fairly, the end. Well, it says something about him having an MRI and showing the brain no, damage. No, what happened was we, we went with Craig, the 19-year-old, because he was I getting see. really in it, too. Craig's and, a drug addict. And we brought the whole family, and they all watched Craig get a, a brain scan. And sort of the, the younger kids were almost scared straight out of... Seeing the brain damage on they, Craig. They saw the brain damage on Craig. Craig kind of realized he should clean up. The younger kids totally realized it. And, and the only guy who didn't realize it was Scott. And the dad. The so he's dad. still using. Ex dad. He's still, I, I'm not really sure. Um, I mean, he's the one that has the gene. That's why Scott got the gene. So Scott's expressing his disease now, and it's going to go. So, That's so it. you're you're able to see uh, negative effects through the MRI with the 19 year old. After how many exposures to ecstasy would you reckon? I a mean, he hadn't been a, oh, a, it, a, a pretty decent amount. But he hadn't been at it for five years, had he? I mean, it'd been more he, like a couple years. But he's actually he's he's also smoking pot almost every day, and that was a lot of the 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 reason for par- part of the brain problem. On, on his scan, so it was the combination of the two. I think. And what does it what does it look like? And is that true, Drew? Mm-hmm. I mean, if well, you're smoking pot, pot for how long? And... Pot's right front of lobe in teenagers. And what about the ex? uh, ecstasy? You see limbic damage. Was it a was it a spec scan or was it an MRI? It was the thing that looks like there's holes in the brain. Well, that's in the, in the, in the middle part. That's yeah, that's yeah. ecstasy. That's yeah. ecstasy. Wow. And yeah. and they only need twenty exposures to get that twenty. He huh? he had he had Why the brain of a forty five year old guy, and he, he's nineteen. Yeah. And that, that Is that what the, that that's what that's that what means? They said, yeah. That's what the, that's the pot. That's a generalized atrophy from pot. Oh, but Drew, you're forty five. You're a smart. Yeah. Guy. Yeah, but you don't want to see my. I don't want to see my brain. <laughs> I wouldn't mind taking a peek at it. I'd, mm-hmm. I'd, I'd drop kick it across the parking lot and then <laughs> urinate on it. <laughs> then I'd sell it on eBay. Drew's brain, everybody. <laughs> Start the bidding at like $18. See if I can get enough to get a case of beer for the weekend. All right. Let's uh, take some calls. And uh, I guess we're going to keep the uh, topic to uh, X and drugs and all that tonight. Sure. Get some of that. All right. Mark? Hey. You're 34? Yeah. What's up? Hey, uh, so I, I guess I've been clean for about a year, but it started about 18 for about five years. I know I did more than 20, <laughs> so I'm I'm kind of wanting to go check out my brain. But you talking about but, ecstasy? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty regular every weekend during the week for probably about four or five years, and then then off and on meth and real heavy about three years ago for a couple of years. And my question was to Dr. Drew, what uh, what kind of long term stuff have I done to myself and like emotionally or 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 like behaviorally or anything and, and is it reversible and well here's what you can expect and here's what's not reversible what you can expect is starting to get some panic and anxiety and have difficulty going outside without feeling sort of overwhelmed following uh, I mean it's been a year and I'm, I'm pretty much okay I just seem to I fly off the handle about every little thing okay, following that you get depressed and irritable you reckon I reckon yeah. and then uh you'll typically have persistent memory problems, new learning, short-term memory, that kind of thing. So it's mood disturbances and memory problems that tend to be the most persistent from ecstasy and to both amphetamine as well. Okay? Anything it, anything I can do to No, those brain, No, those are dead brain cells. They're you gone. Can't, they can't rub aloe on your brain those, or anything you know, like that? The brain, does <laughs> not re- brain does, <laughs> for the most part, does not regenerate. That is, that is, really? It's, it's over. Can he jog or something? What's, uh, <laughs> what's the best thing you can... Uh, What's the best vitamin? Is there a mineral or something? I say you want to clean up your act. Stop drinking. Stop drinking coffee. I, I don't know. Start uh, taking multivitamins. So, I don't know. Yoga. You know, maybe they start focusing. You know, start. Uh, there's all this crazy stuff about antioxidants. There really is no good evidence no, to say that, that stuff works. The the fact is certainly balancing your diet, making sure you're taking appropriate vitamins. Exercising regularly, blood supply to that area is probably more important than anything else, and certainly very high levels of exercise and catecholamines that sort of thing enhance that. Yeah. What about uh, exercising your brain or working your brain out? Works. It, it helps you grow new. You grow new connections. 
You don't grow new brain, but you grow new connections. Yeah, like that's why I play uh, like I play a good game of Stratego on the internet almost yeah. every night. Good. Stratego! Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How's your majors? Uh, right. They're protecting they my tens? king or something. Let me tell you what a uh, ADD retard I was. I, as a kid, Stratego is this crappy... I didn't even have Stratego. My neighbor, uh, Max Truex, had Stratego. And it, it's like some, I don't know, what would you go? It's like Battleship, sort of. Kind sort of, like of chess meets Battleship meets chess, checkers. M- yeah, meets uh, Tolstoy or yeah, something. Yeah, and right, and, right. and you, you got to protect your king. Or I couldn't play it in a regular way. We had to play Dart Stratego, which is he would set up his pieces on one side of the room, and I would set mine up on the other side of the room, and I had, we would shoot darts out of a dark gun to try to knock over That, that, that the wasn't king. the way the game was designed to be played. I, I, I know, but I'm saying is it, it, I had such ADD yes. that, that the idea of sitting quietly and moving pieces you and waiting your turn and not firing something or knocking something down or destroying something was unacceptable to me. So dart stratego. Good times. Yeah. Tricia? Yeah. You're 24? Yeah. What's up? Okay, my question is for Dr. Drew. And my question is, is female ejaculation real? Yeah. Okay. For some women, some don't have it, some do. Some have it rarely, some have it frequently. Okay. So, okay, it is real. (laughs) I just wanted to know because I've been doing this off and on, and it's not a clitoral orgasm. It's more deep. And sometimes, you know, I was kind of wondering if it was pee or what it was. Sometimes it is pee, and that's a different thing. Well, wait a minute. You're having these things. You can't you can't figure out whether it's urine coming out of you or not? I don't know, because I don't have a test tube, and I can't test it. Maybe take some vitamins the night before. and uh, eat, eat asparagus. Asparagus, night, right. And yeah. then if it yeah. smells funny after the foam part. You got okay, it's okay. So eat asparagus, huh? Or take some vitamins. What? You know, those take it, make it bright yellow. Yeah, what about okay. when you pull a booger out of your nose? You got to take it to the lab, or you <laughs> pretty, yep, pretty I do, safe I do. on the fact that it might just be a booger? So are these more intense <laughs> orgasms when you're having the uh, ejaculate or whatever it is? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because some women tell us that it's not. Nece- it's just a different one. It's not necessarily a more intense one. Well, what Drew's saying is, is we would assume that if it, it it's sort of, especially because we're guys, we're we're just assuming if something's coming out, it must be more powerful than one that doesn't project anything or produce anything. But it appears to be the same. It just some women can produce something, some women can't, and it doesn't seem to be any more intense. Right. But we can't get over that. It still seems like you'd have to give the edge to something flying out. Well, you're producing something. Yeah. You've created something. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Trisha. Trisha doesn't seem to have a real good handle on her vagina. Trisha. <laughs> What's up with yes. you? Did you go to junior college? I I did. I yeah. did. That's, that's sorry. Phenomenal. I'm sorry, baby. You should sue the state. I I I, I smelled a little junior college on you. <laughs> All right, but you're out of that mess now, right? Well, I, I'm going back. No, going no. Back. <laughs> Why? <laughs> well, let me tell you. Going back to junior college is like going back to an abusive marriage. Are you in Minneapolis? Yeah. All those great yeah. schools around uh, there. Come why on. would you go back yeah. to junior college? I'm going back for my associates. Yeah, well, we get that. I understand. It's like that's saying I'm going back to college to oh, go to I, college. I, I thought you just <laughs> want to score a granola bar at the snack shack. I didn't know you were there taking classes. I see yeah. you want to get a degree. I already have my diploma. Yeah. All right, yeah. all right. Cool. But don't don't. Why don't you go to a four year now? Well, that's the next step. <laughs> don't don't push her out. Okay, right? that's gonna get a little heavy. All right, I'm sorry. She's okay. got her diploma. Come yeah. On. Uh, what, Drew, what do you want? Seriously, what do you think's worse on the um, on the mind, the human mind, the Ecstasy brain? Ecstasy or uh, junior, college, junior college? Junior college system. Ooh. I mean, seriously, well, would you rather have your son at age 18 attend uh, a semester at the local junior college or just do X and rave? But doesn't JC virtually guarantee you have a bong relationship? Yes, there's a certain I mean, amount of drug I mean, use, at least yeah. secondhand smoke. Yeah, so it's sort of, it, you can't never se- it's like one of these studies where you can't separate out the different factors. Right. It's the same. Yeah. Alright, all right. Hey, you know my policy, I want only foreigners going to junior college. The only, see, they have an excuse for going there. Jay, you must have went to college somewhere. I, I did. The junior, I, regular? I, I went to regular, UC Berkeley. Yeah, see? Yeah. See, look at him. Smart, doing something, his parents are proud. 
the uh, the junior college system should only be utilized by foreigners because see, they they come a they work hard in college but b they they transfer they come from other countries and they they have to start at that level all the all the round eyes in uh, all the white the white folks at the junior college are just the crappy high school students who didn't feel like getting a job that's why it doesn't work for them i'm going to sort this whole thing out i'm going to turn most of them into prisons when i'm in charge jay sounds good yeah, yeah i'll I'm make there. you uh I'll make you uh, in, no, no. I'm gonna make him in charge of like a documentary film. Oh, I see. Scared, scared straight from JC. Yeah, actually, I might make Jay uh, head of my propaganda minister. I'm there. I'm there, <laughs> John. Prison films. You're 23. Yes, sir. What's up? Yeah, I just wanted to say I listen to y'all like every night, and uh, I've been trying to get uh, the same situation, uh, someone else's problem, <laughs> but uh, no one else seems to come up with the same problem I have. All right. Well, you had to call in then. Here you go. Well, um. I've been seeing this girl about three years now. Um, we broke up about a year ago, and we were sexually active. Um, when we got back together, she was ticklish everywhere, and I and she wasn't on her. She wasn't before. She wasn't before. We were very orally active and sexually active. What happened in that intervening year? Uh, well, we, we were only apart for three weeks. And in that Wait, hang on a second. Stop, stop. Did I miss something? I don't know. Didn't he say they broke up for a year? I thought he said something about that, but maybe they broke up about the middle of uh, December and then got back together the first week in January. <laughs> or maybe it was a year ago this happened. A year ago. I think that's what uh, it was. A three-week breakup. A year ago. All right, so she was very ticklish when he got back together. Yeah. But in three weeks, she became... She, I couldn't go down on her, and she she was ticklish. And well, I, well, hold on a second. You You... Not being able to go down on her and her being generally ticklish could be two different things. Okay. Did you test her by, uh, you know, giving her the uh, Gucci Gucci Goo or the bee's knees or any of that? Well, before, like... Did you or did you not give her the Gucci Gucci Goo? <laughs> yeah, I gave her the Gucci Gucci Goo, okay. <laughs> no, but I mean... Hey, all right, hold on, we got to talk. What I'm saying is, is she could have broken up. They could have broken up for three weeks. She She could have got hooked up with some other guy or had a regression therapy and realized that she'd been molested or whatever, then he could have went to give her oral sex and she could have got freaky about it and it could have manifested itself with, no, 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 you know, that yeah, kind of I'm thing. Are you sure it's ticklish or right. it's just don't go Aversive, anywhere yeah. near me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't... Like, haha, don't go anywhere near me. That sort of ticklish. Yeah, yeah. Right. I tell you, Jay, you, you should be in front of the camera, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Forget about behind the camera. Did you hear that acting? <laughs> that was a great simulation of the don't come near me with the laughter. John, do you think it's any... It, here is 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 there anything like that going on? I mean, did you... Seriously, it's, did you tickle her under the arms when you were in a non-sexual situation? No, it's... it's. I used to be able to, like, finger her. I used to be able to go down on her. And... Listen, she doesn't want you touching her genitalia is the thing. Right. Is she mad at you? No, we've did been she back start, together for a year. Did she start some? Great. Okay. Did she start some medication in that intervening time? No. A new um, birth control pill. No, same brand. Um, I mean, three months after we got back together, she started uh, mm -hmm. a uh, a medication for um, a, a a toe fungus. I don't know if that would uh, have any kind of. Um, why uh, Why did you break up for the three weeks? I was a very confused person. <laughs> Uh -oh. oh, see, see yeah. there may be some stuff. Yeah, going what on. happened? I uh, I had problems at school, and um, dad was coming down on me hard. Work was coming down on me hard. I work full time, go to school full time, and a full time girlfriend, and um, it was just a lot of stress all at the same time. Plus, I wanted to go have fun. And hold on a second. Whoa, <laughs> Jesus Christ! Well, first off, here's what I love about doing this show, Jay. Is uh. Jade Blumenfeld, by the way, is our guest tonight. He is a uh, documentary filmmaker and he's got a uh, show coming out on HBO Sunday night or a documentary Small on Small uh, Town X. Ecstasy, yeah. Yeah, 10 o'clock. But here's what I love most about this show. I go, like, hmm, she's ticklish, but now we're all getting a little suspicious, right? right. What do you mean ticklish? Gone away for three weeks? Now, it, he originally poses the question of she went away, came back, all of a sudden her whole body was ticklish, yeah. as if. It's like saying she used to be able to eat chocolate. Now she's horribly she allergic vomits, to yeah. chocolate, right? Yeah. But it's th so. But we're all getting a little suspicious. We're on the same page, which is she doesn't want him monkeying around below the belt. So like, 
Jay, is she, does she do that when you're having sex, or is she ticklish when you're in a non-sexual situation, like when you're tickling her under the arm? I used to finger her. <laughs> <laughs> And we'll go that's down what, under all the that's time. what I love about our culture. It, they're really, it's like, you know, when you throw a dog in a pool and you just hold its <laughs> tail and its feet just keep moving and moving and moving. It's like, they, they kind of, there's a part of them that knows you're holding their tail, but there's a part of them that can't stop their feet from moving. They just can't stop. That's like, like you throw a curve at them and they're like, I'll think about it, but no, I got a mission to go on here. Now, he, uh, he is a full-time student. He's working full-time. His old man's coming down on him. She was a source of stress, but he wanted to have a good time. Wanted to have a good time. <laughs> he wanted to have fun. All right. Now, okay. let's, now, here's, yeah. now this is all going to come into focus when we get out of him that he messed around with uh, one of her friends. Right. John? Yeah. Did you mess around with one of her friends? No. But with somebody? No. No? She doesn't? Is she listening now? No. <laughs> Does she have some suspicion that I, you? Maybe I don't know. Does she have some suspicion that you cheated during that time, or is that why you broke up in the first place? No, we uh, w w we didn't really grow apart. I I grew away because. <laughs> Dude, what kind of fun when you when you needed to have fun? What was what, that? What kind of fun were we having? I wanted to be eighteen again. I wanted to be free. I wanted to not have to worry about anything. You know, be back in high school. Feeling. What does that mean? Well, in high school, you went to school, and then you just had fun. A after What is fun right, for but, you? But listen, hold on. You're still going to school and working full-time. Right. What's dumping your girlfriend? How's that get you back into high school? You well, wanted to finger new girls, didn't you? <laughs> no, no. We, we we get along great, and <laughs> you know what? Right. All right, listen, John. I never John. cheat on her. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. All right, look. Oh, man, men are so well, thick. Well, it's I need, it's I, amazing. She is it's on no a medicine. wonder women hate men. I need to ask one thing about the medicine. Real quick. Ah, she's taking Tenactin, no, please. No, no, probably Sporanox. Sporanox? She, Smart she, money's she, on Tenactin. She's taking Diflucan or, or Sporanox? Do you think uh, he knows? I'm not sure. It's, to, it's toe fungus stuff. He yeah, these, these, color fungus, hair these, is, these antifungals me. can be quite powerful, and they can affect her a little bit. I mean, they certainly, yeah, just about any medicine can affect sexual functioning, and maybe in his screwed up, you know, junior college brain, maybe. Oh, they, true. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> maybe, maybe this didn't happen re exactly three weeks when they got back together. Maybe it was a couple months after they got back together when she started these medications, and now he's blaming it on the breakup. Uh, I, he is trying to be intimate with her, and she's having difficulty being intimate with him because but they claim, he isn't listening but to they, her. I, I, I agree with you. that That's my number two choice, but it's possible that there's something biologically going on here, and he's wanting to blame it on... Something, okay, you know. that's true. But you understand, you're just you're just giving him fuel because he's going to say. What I understand is we can't get it. We're never going to figure it out. Drew probably. said you absorbed something bad, and now I can't finger you no more. It's all because of your toe. <laughs> you now reckon? we either chopping your toe and off, or I gag you and with this. Uh, I have another question about her. What? Wait, we got to answer this. Why does a 23 year old have toe fungus? Is she diabetic. That's what please, I was thinking. Please, please. <laughs> what the hell do we know? Well, that's important in all this. All right, come listen. Because diabetics get weird stuff. Right, come on, John. Fancy. Yeah. Is she diabetic? No. Why does she have toe fungus at 23? You can get that at a... Yeah, uh, but yeah, I know you can get it, but you do... Pedicure. Oh, you know, she means she... From, a pedicure, actually, is how she got it. Um, no. No? no? You can get that in your fingernails from... Your fingernails from having acrylic stuff and stuff put on, but... Not no, your toes? Your toes means your immune system isn't working right. Really? Yeah. And so, what's up? Is she do drugs or something? Or she? No. All right. Oh, All right. That's straight. All right, there, John. Well, she, she take care of her uh, dogs, and uh, he can uh, work on the vagina. It's all one big happy family. Jay Blumenfeld is our guest tonight. He's a director of a HBO documentary called Small Town Ecstasy. Sunday night, this Sunday night, ten o'clock on HBO. We'll take a uh, quick break. We'll be back after this. <laughs> Love Line, Love Line. We'll be right back. Love Line is brought to you by Trojan, America's most trusted condom for over 80 years. Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew over there. Cake's going to be in here on uh, Sunday night, and that's good because I like them. And we haven't seen them in a long time. 
I'll be in North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that, Drew? Uh, good morning, America. Really? Yeah. Why North Carolina? Well, uh, they started their five-state tour in North Carolina. And they started there because I was given a college thing in North Carolina mm -hmm. on Friday. Mm. So that so, means you got to stay the whole week there? Weekend. Yeah. That's a week now, yeah. now that you're big time. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to head up to Princeton and talk there on Saturday. That's nice. Yeah, I'm going to go back, back to North Carolina to meet my Good Morning America team. Yeah. Oh, you pissed so. at them, huh? Well, I'm not pissed at them, but I thought I, the whole thing was, oh, we'll meet you in North Carolina. I was like, okay, great. We'll set this all up. And like, wait a minute. i got to come back to North Carolina to meet you guys. Yeah. Well, that's But it's, I'm looking forward to it. It'll be fine. Yeah. Well, it's, it's uh, we're going to, we're going to. You're a desperate man, you know. Yeah. Jay Blumenfeld is our uh, guest tonight. What are you going to do with them, Drew? Besides Forget kiss it. their ass? No. Nothing? Talk about junior college. Okay. Hey, when you give your talks, what do you talk about, like, at these schools? Talk about, it's, well, when he and I do it, it ends up being just love line. And when I do it, I give about a 20-minute talk on sort of my observations on things and how what I, th what I think is going on between men and women and drug and alcohol stuff. And then I just take questions and let them drive the discussion. Each one is completely different. Yeah. yeah. And that the auditorium is different, but other than that, the content. Yeah, I say exactly, the precisely the same thing. <laughs> the microphones right. are a little different. Yeah. All right. Jay Blumenfeld is our guest tonight. He is a uh, documentary filmmaker, and uh, his documentary, Small Town Ecstasy, will be on uh, HBO this Sunday at 10 o'clock. And it uh, chronicles uh, the life of a guy by the name of uh, Scott, who uh, turns out to uh, be a pops, who uh, was a real uh, straight edge guy. Then he went to a rave, brought his kids, and we'll yeah. watch the whole family fall apart. I wonder if he was bipolar and he just started getting manic, and then the drug use kicked in as he sort of got a little grandiose with his mania. It's possible. Yeah. But he, he seemed pretty sane for 40-some-odd years. Yeah. What'd he do for that's, a living? That's, that's, He's a logger. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds sort of romantic. Yeah. I'm starting to fall in love with this guy. And a real <laughs> renaissance guy. He's logging during the day and then he's uh, listening to te Euro techno pop oh, yeah. at night and freaking out on X. Probably not a whole lot of other loggers at the rave, would you say? No, and, and I don't think any of his logging buddies were, were sort of into his rave lifestyle. Especially oh, when he'd go to logging with sort of his baggy pants and orange shirt and they'd all be in, in flannel. Yeah, a bunch of guys look like the brawny spokesman. <laughs> yeah. I don't. We don't have any loggers around here, but I'm. I'm guessing. Uh, I'm guessing uh, loggers would be probably the equivalent to our like construction workers, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Sort of uh, stupid guys who uh, wield things that like stuff that uh, run on gas and, well, kind of guys uh, I grew up with. Buffy. Yes. You're 20. Or yes. guys like working in a quarry. Yeah. There you go. Buffy, how you you're. Guys, how yeah. you guys doing? Good. Good. What's up? Okay. So, like, six months ago, I took a bunch of shrooms. I did, like, almost half an eighth. In one sitting? Yeah. Hmm. And, like, ever since then, I have... I've seen trails ever since then. Like, it has never stopped. Yeah. And I, I get, like, the shroomy feeling when I'm sober. Yeah. And I used to smoke weed all the time, too, and now I can't even smoke weed because I get the shroomy feeling again. Interesting. Well, unfortunately, there's not a lot known about shrooms. We expect what you're getting is something similar to what we see from LSD, okay. which is a, either some residual, obviously because you're still seeing trailers, your brain has been altered by the drug, right? Mm -hmm. And part of that alteration is an alteration in the mood centers, and people get little personality changes and panic attacks, and again, mood disturbances. And uh, did the shrooms once? A big, big yeah, time, a big it was dose. My first time. Big dose, and we, again, how it's big a, was the dose? Uh, it was almost half an eighth. Almost half. Almost. What's that look like in baggy terms? I, uh, it's like the bottom of the bag, like just like a few things. No, you, that's not a that's not a big dose of shrooms. Baby, you're just suffering from lightweight syndrome. Did you do a bunch of acid? Oh no, I've never done acid. Yeah. Well, yeah. but it, maybe lightweight. Hey, be that as it may, she's yeah. had some injury. All right. And uh, we we expect to see the same stuff from mushrooms we see from LSD because it isn't you know it's a strong hallucinogen. And in her case, the, this this is some either residual brain damage or something called a post hallucinogenic perceptual disorder, which is sort of a locked into that post that hallucinogenic state. And you don't really come out of it fully. You're always in this kind of quasi dream state, and that eventually breaks down into a, again another mood and depressive disorder with anxiety attacks. Yeah, I, and, I'd like to get to the uh, the point from a technological standpoint where we could give people the CAT scan and the PET scan. And find out whose brain was strong enough to handle drugs. 
before that's they really take what them. we need to do before they take them yeah because let's face it you know <clears throat> some people get rear-ended at four miles an hour and uh have to be in traction and can't walk right for for a year and a half and some people take dirt bikes and uh you know have them go down canyons in them tumbling uh, ass over coffee table and uh, brush themselves off and are fine yeah they, I think there's people, I think there are those equivalents with the brain as well. Yeah, maybe. I, I know guys that have done horrible, horrible things to their brain and they're completely lucid and completely sharp. And then there's people who uh, get a half a cap of a bad mushroom and uh, they're freaked out. They mm -hmm. can't drink coffee anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is that? I don't yeah, know. No. But no one wants to pursue that part of it. I don't know how you, well, they are. They're trying to actually look at the genetics of how we respond to drugs. The, right. And I know, I know they're not going to pursue it because they don't know in advance who's got what. Well, no. What, whether you got a durable brain or whether you have a soft brain. Well, we're starting to look at people's potential to respond to certain medication based on their genetic makeup. Maybe we'll be able to see some trends of other type with those same genetic groupings. I would, uh, I would like to look forward to a world in which I could, I could tell my kid, look... You can only smoke this much crack. <laughs> you understand? Here's some mushrooms. You've got that epsilon, epo epsilon gene. Forget it. You ain't doing nothing. Yeah. True said you got what's called uh, soft brain. Runs uh, in the Corollas. Probably got it from uh, dad's side of the family. So, uh, yeah, you can't even do aspirin, son. Mm -hmm. you're, bar <laughs> you're barely getting by as it is. Marty? Yes. You're 30? Yeah. What's up? Um, there's several things. Uh, first of all, first time caller, long time listener, guys. Great morning. Um, I'm I'm married and uh, for about eight years, and uh, my wife doesn't give me head. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta kill yourself. Um. Oh yeah. I'm I'm almost at that point. Well, she never did. Um, let's just say that in the eight years that we've been married, maybe five times. Okay. But not even not even complete. If you know this was important to you. Which it sounds like it must be. Uh, very. Why'd you get married? Uh, Thought you could train her? No. You know what it was? Um, we we both were brought up in a, a strict religion, and, and we got married straight out of the religion as virgins. Ooh. Um, yeah, so... What are you? Um, right now, nothing. No. But, what, uh, what was your religion? Uh, J.W. Jehovah's, Jehovah's Witness. Yeah. Witness, yeah, but... Oh, so but soon as... The, so we never you dropped we never Jehovah even. after the blowing stopped, right? I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, I would too. Can we get back to the five times you did get it? What What was special? Maybe we can recreate that night. A um, times. it wasn't even. It, it was more about um, constantly asking her, constantly asking her. And she was like, "Well, okay, I'll try it." And then, like I said, it wasn't even complete. I mean, I could I couldn't even, you know. Right. Pop, was she disturbed know? by the experience in some way? Um. Technically, yes. Yeah. She she would go and, and and be like, "Well, why are you pre coming?" And I'm like, "Well, that's that's normal." Well, she wants to talk to you about it. Well, while... you know, and I'm like, you know, just just do what you got to do. If... Look, guys, I've 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 gotten to the point that I've shaved it, I've shaved it completely. You know, the man's desperate. Just so that yeah. she won't gag on hairs or anything like that. You know, I'm this close to flying out there and blowing you myself, Marty. <laughs> um, Is even it, even we were we were going to do a promotion that went that way anyway. Maybe Marty's the guy. Adam flies to your town and blows you. Dude, were you in on that meeting, Drew? Some go, some blow. Yeah, that's what you're going to call it, right? Yeah. All right. Hey, Marty? Yeah. Is she uh, still Jehovah's Witness? Uh, no, no, we're not. W was she abused in some way growing up? Um, yeah, when she was younger. What happened? Uh, an uncle of hers uh, just, I guess, fondled her the wrong way. Do you think maybe somebody forced her to have oral sex or anything like that? Um, possibly. I mean, uh, I, I, I vaxxed her, you know, just yeah. like. You know, but you're not you're not likely to overcome that one, Marty. If that's really what's going on here, I mean, I mean if she's really motivated to try to decondition herself, I guess it's possible. But well, that far, first a, off, isn't being brought up Jehovah's Witness a certain of kind of abuse anyway? It, it, well, let me tell you, I've 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 learned that it is because yeah. I, I had no I had no type of a uh, uh, teenage years. You know, no. I'm trying everything now. I'm trying everything from we to yeah. I mean, I, I want some ecstasy. You know, yeah, go sick, uh, buddy, boy, Marty. Get a you prostitute. Know? Maybe this, this, sounds like, this sounds like your buddy Scott in the Small Town Ecstasy <laughs> documentary, because yeah. that's his thing. He was religiously constrained, right? He was religiously constrained, and then he sort of exploded. He went out. Like, just, Marty went out at 30. Though. I can remember, I can, I can believe it at 30, but at 40, it just doesn't make sense to me. 40, you're, you're losing your will to live. Your testosterone levels are dropping. That's when oh, you should yeah. have made it. Yeah. I, I, um, well, who knows? I, at this, uh, when are we going to look at uh, religion? 
serious religion as a form of uh, abuse and a mental disability. Why, why can't we just call it what it is? These, these crazy Hasidic Jews, the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Hare Krishnas, all these nut jobs. Can we just call it a, a, treat it like a mental illness? Just call a goddamn spade a spade. Pathologize it. Yeah, the people are insane, obviously. I mean, what, what is more insane than, uh, you know, waiting, waiting for the, uh, the rapture, going up on the mountain with the uh, lawn chair and, and uh, the AM radio and waiting? <laughs> when it is, isn't that the, one of the definitions of insanity? I mean, what about, what about the uh, Branch Davidian people? I mean, what about the Jonestown people? What, what about these people? Aren't they, don't we consider them insane? I, do you have to kill yourself to be insane? Or how about just a life full of just crazed fantasy? Just b bizarre fantasy based on what some guy with a beard told you uh, before he died. That when are we going to look at this? Is I mean, what about what about these guys? These suicide bombers? When, don't we look at that as mental illness? Isn't it just mental illness? Any form of serious religion doesn't it break down to mental illness, or is it just flat stupidity? What is it? Well, it, it's one or the other. It, it's it's hard. It's a, a continuum, right? Uh, for, let's just take the the bombers, right? Yeah. Um, if it was uh, 1750 and you were acting out against the British, right? Uh, you'd be a freedom fighter. Yeah. And you'd see it as sort of a rational political response where you put your life on the line. Yeah, you got to be a little crazy to do that. But right. Is it pathology, mental illness? I, I, I think so. You, you know, you see, but it's it's tough. Where do you draw the line? It's really tough to say. I, I agree with you. Blowing yourself up when you actually do it. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, yeah, but I know what you're I, saying. I, you're I, you're you're a patriot if you do it 200 years ago. And, and I'm not even talking about definitions. I'm saying where do you where does that continuum become pathology? Is it the thought? Or to want to fight about politics, or to be preoccupied about it all the time, or to be thinking about spiritual things and uh, you know, thinking you know I mean? about it, spiritual there, things. There, I'll let you slide. Let's put on. it this way: there are aspects of the human experience in all humans that is kind of crazy. All humans, absolutely. And and when at what point is it pathology? Is what's hard to. Well, here here's what I'm saying: if if a guy is attracted to let, let's say there's something deviant sexually, mm. let's say you have an adult male. And this adult male is attracted to 11-year-old mm -hmm. uh, male male boys. We look at that as this guy needs some serious help. Or if he thinks there's a aliens uh, in his backyard, well, he needs some I help. Just, but if, he, if, if, but if he grows a beard down to his goddamn waist and uh, puts one of those uh, prayer shawls on and spends every weekend beating his head up against some wailing wall and facing Mecca and all this other nonsense, he's just a pious guy? No, he's the same nut job. He just doesn't have a hankering for It's not manifesting itself this way. Still nuts. Go visit the Hasidim, man. I've been down there. <laughs> Go down to Fairfax on a Tuesday and see these smelly, hairy old guys who couldn't get laid if you taped a, a wad of hundreds to their but may, circumcised but, schlong. But maybe, and just said so they taped boxes to their heads and stuff. They're, they're nuts. But, they're nuts. But, but they're maybe, all nuts. But maybe ritual becomes a, a rational way of managing Whatever. overwhelming Whatever. Let's get them on the medication and yeah. lock them up. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Just somebody stand up and call them nuts and stop being so respectful of people who are, who are clearly nutty. It's, it's nuts. It's not religion. That's what I'm saying. I'm just saying we should have no respect for them. Let's just label them nuts and move on. Thank you. All right. Where were we? Small Town Ecstasy. That's right. That's the uh, documentary we're talking about Sunday night on uh, HBO, 10 o'clock. We're going to take a little break. When we come back, we're going to talk to uh, Gabe. He's done X about uh, 10 times and uh, he's having memory loss after this. We'll be right back. Call on the 1 800 Love 191. Hey everybody, Loveline. I'm uh, Adam Carolla. That is uh, Dr. Drew. Tonight, our guest, Jay Blumenfeld. Jay's a uh, documentary filmmaker. He uh, made himself a uh, documentary for uh, HBO, which is going to air this Sunday night at uh, 10 o'clock on uh, HBO. Now, uh, quiet down. Here we go, guys. 
guys are uh, filing back into the studio as uh, we speak. And uh, let's start off by uh, speaking to uh, Gabe, who's uh, 19. So you've done X uh, 10 times. Right. And, uh, and Freon? Yeah, I've also done some meth and some um, um, smoked weed and stuff. I started doing drugs when I was like um, 12 and then um, was just smoking weed a lot. And then, uh, What's your primary drug now? Um, it's just marijuana. Yeah, I was going to say, usually this story is, ends about being about pot. So, hey, how do you do Freon? Well, um, first it was out of the cans of like or the refrigerant, you know, that you spray on your like keyboards, the air dust cleaners, the dusters. Computer cleaners. Oh, really? Is that Freon? It's, um, it's just hydrocarbon. These are inhaled hydrocarbon. It's not Freon. I don't think so. Well, it's, it's, I, like, it's a propellant. It's a propellant. It's the same, but I know the effect's like the same if you, if you huff like um, Freon like out of, an air, out of an air conditioning. All right. So what, what is the question? Well, like I've done quite a few drugs, and I don't want to do like anything else. And I've got like strong memory relapses, and my speech gets like slurred, and I want to say something. And well, first you've got to stop pot. Okay. And in your case, it's profoundly addictive, and you're not going to stop unless you get some treatment. Okay. You're going to either switch to something else, or you're going to keep going back to it. So you got to go to MA, get a sponsor, work the steps, and really take this rather seriously. Because for those people for whom pot is addictive, it is extremely difficult to stop. Whether or not you continue to have memory problems or these neurologic symptoms afterwards, time will tell, because there's really nothing to be done if it was the ecstasy or the speed or the huffing that caused it. Uh, given that you've only done, you haven't done big time uh, speed or ecstasy or, or inhaled hydrocarbon, so in all probability, this is all, all the pot you've been doing for the last eight years. So let's yeah. get going on that. You may see some significant improvement. All my marijuana addicts complain about memory problems. And the number one complaint, can't find their car keys. Really? Number one complaint. Yeah. Uh, correction, van keys. I was going to say the, the VW Hot van. Hot guys drive yeah. vans. Yeah. True. Yeah. Come right. on. And All thanks. right. So uh, line one, who do we have here? This is Craig. Now, now who is Craig? Craig's one of the guys who Craig, was... Uh, Craig is, I think, is uh, the one of the people in the documentary. Um, He's the oldest son. Oldest son. I right. mean, can I ask him questions about his dad and his previous Shh. history and stuff? Yeah. What do you mean? Of course you can. Well, no, <laughs> I don't want to, but I don't want to. Oh, so what? Yeah. He's done. <laughs> Jay doesn't care. He got paid. He hammered that check months ago. Craig? Hey, how you doing, man? Good. Hey, Craig. Hey, how you doing? Good, man. Let's, uh, let's figure out a way to make sure it's Craig. Why don't you ask All him right. a couple questions, Jay? Just what's your, sure what's your brother's name? Which one? The youngest. Samuel. That's it. Right, and how Craig. about the next... Oldest sibling. Is oldest it? sibling would be uh, Job, my older brother. Yeah. No, how about the one between you and Sam? That's Heather. Okay, there he's, you go. He's, he's three for three. That's him. All yeah. right, so uh, now, Craig, you're 19. I am. And your dad is uh, Rave Dad, Scott, right? There's a piece that, that's missing from me, Craig, in this whole story. Was your dad, did he have anything go on before this all started happening? Was there anything unusual about him? No, nothing at all. He never had any mood disturbances or... Right. Actually, um, I had... If you want to go back the farthest, uh, I, I probably started it. Started his drug use? Right. No. No, no, no. How? Um, I had gotten into it first, and by that time I had graduated. I was living on my own and uh, basically told him what I was doing. And uh, he... he Liked what, how I was talking about it. I was being pretty persuasive, and eventually just talked him into doing it. Hmm. But C Craig, I don't, I don't think you should blame yourself. I, I, he, he would have probably tried something, whether you had turned him onto it or not. That's that's it, my he, first of all. He's a grown adult. He's taking direction from his yeah. nine-year-old. No, one and, of those other loggers would have turned him on. There's, <laughs> there's, there's, there's got to be something else going on with him. And I understand is that your respect, your your pet scan didn't turn, turn out quite normally. Is that right? That that's true. What what did that show? Uh, it did show um, there was a slight a bit of brain damage on on the left side of on my temporal lobe, mm -hmm. um, and and lots of memory loss. Okay, Are you, did that motivate you to get some treatment? And uh, not really treatment. I just kind of I stopped all the use I I had doing. I was doing. You stopped everything, and, uh, and just left right. the alcohol. Just right. Just the alcohol. Well, that's gonna. Not, with, not that... just kind of drink. All right. Well, that's gonna take off now. Is what happens when you switch over to alcohol? How do you know he left the alcohol? He didn't. 
No, I mean, how do you know he? that was the only thing you just said? You oh, left the alcohol. How he, do you know? How do I know that he's still using alcohol? Because drug addicts that are as into as Greg is cannot stop everything. They, they've got to replace it with something, either right. sex or thrill or alcohol. And usually what they do is go, well, that hard stuff, I can stop that, no problem. But I still like my beers. And that starts to escalate, and then they become full-blown alcoholics. All right. But still better than dropping the X on the weekends. Yeah, but it's something he's going to have to deal with. All right. Hey, Craig? Yep. Uh, you going to be watching this documentary Sunday night? Definitely. Have you seen the final cut of it? No, no, I haven't, not yet. So uh, you worried about it? Uh, I'm not really worried about it. I'm I'm past that point. I'm just looking forward to, or not not necessarily looking forward. I'm just gonna see, you know, what the final outcome is and see how it goes. And you know, it is a, a made-for-TV kind how, of movie. How's so your family doing? How's your family doing? Everything's exactly how it happened. How's your family doing? Uh, they're doing good, actually. Yeah. Um, Hold on, let me explain that. Well, who uh, who played your part? Uh, Michael <laughs> J. Fox? Who, yeah, yeah. Who, this is what I love about people in reality <laughs> documentaries. Well, this isn't, I didn't say that. Well, I, they they made it seem like I said something. Yeah, they, every every time we get some a-hole from Survivor on here, it's like, oh, the editing. <laughs> it's like the editing. You took a log to the guy's head while he was asleep. Yeah, I know, but it's the way they, they edited me to be a villain. It's like, <laughs> I saw you stab the guy. What, what are you doing? It's a documentary. <laughs> All right, Craig. Uh, good, uh, good luck to you there, buddy. Watch that, and uh, I like to know what his family's doing. They'll be coming after uh, Jay, trying to kill him. About, uh, I'd say about ten forty-five, eleven o'clock uh, Sunday night. You look good, Craig. Good Jay, to talk to you, man. Jay uh, Blumenfeld is our guest tonight, documentary uh, filmmaker, doing the uh, Small Town Ecstasy, which uh, is going to premiere on uh, HBO Sunday night. We'll take a little break. We'll be right back. All right, guys. Bottom line, here's the deal. Looking to hook up? Sick of wasting time with the wrong person? One call's all you need to make. Call the Dateline. The Dateline. 877-889-DATE. Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. 1-800-LOVE-191. We'll be right back. Hey everybody, Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Cake coming in here on uh, Sunday night, so it'll be good to uh, see those guys again. Jay Blumenfield, Field, not Felt. And uh, let me tell you why I uh, Jay's my uh, new best friend now because uh, I called him uh, Blumenfeld twenty times. Eh, nine, eighteen, right. eighteen times. He let it ride, and he let it ride, and. Uh, our crack staff here on Loveline had it uh, written on the uh, on the uh, beat sheet uh, uh, F E L D. So of course uh, I pronounce that Feld, not uh, Field. So think, think how different it is than our callers. It's uh, it's Andrea. No, no it's oh. Andrea. <laughs> oh. Someone, where's where's Tara? Is she around here? <laughs> Tara, whatever her name is. You should you should. I'm gonna give you. A, I'm gonna. I'm gonna put you two in the same room, and you can explain to her why she doesn't need to correct everybody when uh, they mispronounce her tar and terra and all that nonsense, and that nobody cares. And it turns out to just basically alienate people. Whatever. You know what I mean? Like when someone gives me the correction on their name, I just think a hole. Right? I walk away thinking a hole. Mm -hmm. That's all I can think. So Jay, thank you. And he and he told me during the commercial, he said, it doesn't really matter, <laughs> but it is bloom and field, not fell. <laughs> I like this man. He is uh, he has uh, made a documentary which is uh, airing uh, Sunday night at ten o'clock on uh, HBO, and it's called uh, Small Town Ecstasy, and it is about uh, ecstasy. And it ended up, you were going to make just a general uh, documentary about ecstasy, but you ended up stumbling on uh, striking gold, finding one family, and basically sticking with them, right? Yeah, we we shot a bunch of different people in in various stages of life, and we just sort of realize that you could tell a better story just by sticking with one family and there's there's just a bunch of there's a lot of dynamic that worked out better so we, we stuck with with that one family in it and that was the whole thing so now it's called small town ecstasy instead of generation ecstasy if you ever uh, do a, a documentary on families that uh, hang out don't talk that much and like to nap and just sort of wait you know, call it waiting to die you do one on the Corollas 
You can watch my dad. We should talk after the show. That's... Yeah, he goes on walks, very slow walks, and then likes to read books without pictures. And then we have long-winded discussions about uh, guys who have died, hmm. basically. C- CBS. We should, yeah. we should take it there tomorrow. Yeah, it's, it's life in the fast life. <laughs> yeah. He, he, uh, why, he, he's, he's an outlaw. He's a, he's a kind of guy who will uh, use uh, apple juice in his granola and not think twice about it, my dad. He's a maniac. I mean, he's he, you know, clearly living on the edge, driving a uh, driving a beige Buick. I mean, he, he's out of control. He's a maniac. I, I like to rail. I think he has that Viking alcoholic gene. Would, would you say, Drew? You oh, met oh, my dad. Oh yeah, he's over the top. Thrill seeker. Yeah. Sometimes he wears uh, pants that don't have the elastic pleat in the side. Mm. It's not often, but once in a while he puts those on. Out of control. Brian. Yeah. You're 32. What's up? Um, my wife. Uh uh, well, I'm 32. My wife's a couple years older. Um, she had gotten pregnant twice and had two miscarriages. Mm-hmm. Um, one was at about four weeks and one at about 10 weeks. And after that, they started doing all kinds of tests on us. And I was wondering, um, they noticed my testosterone was really low. And I didn't know if that could affect it or my sperm count being low. And then... Was your, sure. testo- was your testosterone low and your sperm count low? Yeah, both of them were. And the problem was there were two spontaneous miscarriages? Yes. Okay, well, that has nothing to do with your sperm count, right? Okay, so that's you, what you, I figured. You got her pregnant, pregnant, right? Yeah, you were able to get her pregnant, so that's that. Okay, and then I wasn't sure. Um, I had a back surgery and a lot of back problems, so I've been taking um, Oxycontin and... And smoking a little pot. Nah, no pot. <laughs> really? Just uh, the Oxycontin and, and Actiq. It's fentanyl. Um, fentanyl? Or, Jesus Christ. What is that? It's a heavy opiate. Either, sure. you're, you're an opiate addict, Brian. Oh, I'm not a, a opiate addict or anything. I, I have to take them for my back. But, I mean, I go see the pain management doctor and go to a um, um, pain uh, management gr- group and see uh, pain psychologist. 32. Is there alcoholism in your family? No. Nowhere? I don't even drink. What was the, but not in your family, there's no alcoholism? Um, No, not that I know of. And you knew your parents, your grandparents? Yeah. Yeah, yeah nobody in my family. Right. Maybe it's just chronic pain. But certainly, yes, these are heavy-duty medications. Well, does that have anything to do with his wife's fertility problem? Well, it lowers certainly his low testosterone and sperm count. But so no. that, that could be from, from taking low? Yeah, but not your not the miscarriages, though. Yeah, when, once you get pregnant, you're pregnant, right? Right. Okay, that's what I thought. But then I wasn't sure if maybe, you know, any of those. Um, what, what is the nature of your back injury? Um, I had a, a two herniated discs, and then one of them was was out so far and it was extruded or broken off into the nerves and then um it what how'd you do it i i used to work uh for a water company so a lot of lifting right and it ended up where my leg was completely numb in my foot and i'd go to take a step my leg wouldn't move okay. after a few concussions i got the um surgery a few concussions because I would go to take a step and my leg wouldn't move; it was so numb. Would fall over! I would wow! Go kind of right over. Wow! Yeah, that's that's why that's actually the really the true indication for doing back surgery is when you have motor dysfunction in the leg. Mm-hmm. Well, pain, not a reason to have back surgery, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, Jay, part of the uh, pitch. Uh, I didn't finish. My dad. My dad had uh, last year. He had a beer uh, before the street lights came on. Hmm. One time. But I mean, you know, I mean, he's I mean, Drew. You've seen the guy; he's out of control. Yeah, you have control. to put the show on mm-hmm. after eleven. He develops mm-hmm. the, the, the alcohol-induced psychosis. But Brian, you notice how Brian is different than our usual back yeah. pain. That this is this is chronic back pain. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. You can yeah. talk to him. He's clear. He talks to you. He's not escalating. He's following directions, doing what he's supposed to do. Right. And a structured program has a specific neurologic deficit. Huh. That's that's what this all was invented for us for guys like Brian. Right. Yeah. You could uh, do a whole thing. You could watch him eat dinner at five thirty in the evening. It's great. It's great. Dad, uh, Drew, does your uh, does your dad eat? Uh, he parents? eats. Yes, he eats. Yes. Does he eat at like five o'clock? Do mm-hmm. do you get progressively? And we we talked about this last week. My theory is is you shave. 15 minutes off the time that you sit down for dinner from the age 30 on every 10 years. So by the time you're like 70 years old, you, you, sh- you shave it down to about 4.30 in the afternoon. It just keeps, eventually it's going to hit brunch. <laughs> like if my dad lived to 140, he would eat breakfast at about 8.30 in the morning. It just keeps working its way down. 
Like it's it's you know oh you know what it is because you start going to bed earlier and earlier. Mm-hmm. Is that what it is? Mm-hmm. And getting up earlier and earlier too. <laughs> and, and peeing <laughs> a lot. Yeah. yeah. Their sleep wake cycles good. They're, they're they're gonna they have a new meal for people in octogenarian age. It's called dunch. Right. <laughs> <laughs> It's uh, that's dinner and lunch or mm-hmm. dead and lunch. <laughs> I, I think dead works better. Lyle. Yeah. You're 22. Yes, sir. What's up? Uh, well, this question is for Drew, and uh, I heard a couple minutes ago one of the female callers said that she had eaten about a, a half an eighth of mushrooms and was experiencing flashback symptoms and concentrators. Right. And I'd say in about a two months time, an approximate amount, I've done about a thousand hits of LSD. Uh-huh. Well, are, you, are you still feeling locked into kind of a dream state? Oh, uh, well, my normal thinking pattern is my memories of like the past mm-hmm. are basically gone. And the way my mind structure is now, the way I think, is it's locked into the LSD, the LSD type of right. thinking. Right, that's right. It's called a post-hallucinogenic perceptual disorder. You, so, need, you need to see something about this, Lyle. Hold on. You, you did 18 hits a day? Uh, anywhere. I'd get up in the morning, go to the refrigerator, be like, oh, do I want to have some breakfast? No, I'll eat 10 hits of acid. I won't be hungry. That night, I'd eat 50. The next couple of days, I'd eat 100. You get you get tolerant to it, so these guys can take big big doses. Yeah. Where, where do you get a hundred hits that uh, just lying around? Well, I was uh, hitchhiking through Frisco and kind of met. That's some people. enough. You know, <laughs> what I mean? met some people. Yeah, and that's it. They just give you uh, hundreds and thousands of hits. Yeah, they were just kicking down. So what they kicked down, I was eating, and I was eating and eating and eating and eating. Wow. And I finished it off with about four hits of pure concentrated peyote. Wow. And just and that's not coupling with about. All right, it, could, listen, could you just, just uh, uh, can you just uh, swallow an M80? Yeah, basically. Yeah, basically it would have done. Yeah, it would have done about the same thing. It wouldn't have been quite as pleasurable, I suspect, but same damage. Well, Jesus so what do you want to do now, Lyle? Uh, well, the the side effects have been lasting years. I mean, four years now. That's right. Do you want to get some help with this? Well, I want to know how to make it go away if I'm gonna ever be able to think p- properly. You need to see a psychiatrist. You know, you ought to go. You ought to go to the, the uh, Dr. David Smith at the Haight Ashbury Free Clinic in uh, San Francisco. He has a lot of experience with this particular problem. Okay. Okay. Haight Ashbury Free Clinic, David Smith, and it is uh, not something that is going to go away. It's going to change in terms of its features, and they're not pretty. I know uh, Hate Street isn't spelled uh, like hatred, but H A I G H T. Still doesn't seem like the world's greatest name for a street, does it? Living on Hate Street. They call it the Hate. It's almost like a song, you know. Hey, you've been living on Hate Street, baby. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's all about love on Hate Street, though. That's the I know, it's yeah. very, That's, very ironic. Yeah, I mean... Yeah. It's about love, it's about drugs. Hate must have been some guy's name. Yeah. But tough ass. You don't get a street name. You know, what if your name is like uh, Bob Nigger? <laughs> what, what do you do? You, you name a street after you? Do, do but, you know what I'm saying? But you know, you, you don't. You don't. That's what I'm saying. So you don't read at him. Well, you know, you're not thinking hate when you think hate Ashbury. You're thinking... I, I don't read, you're no. More, you're thinking more hate, hate. No, I mean, I, I hear hate, and um, I, I think of the word hate, because that yeah, sounds no. exactly like the word hate, like hatred. It sounds like it, but... See what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. Jessica? Yes. You're 21? Yes. What's up? Okay, hi, Adam. This is a question for Dr. Drew. All right. Um... I have endometriosis, which is attached to my intestines, um, but my OBGYN is going to start me on a Luprin therapy mm-hmm. after she goes and cuts some of it from my intestines. Good. Um, but I'm afraid, she said she's going to do it for a year first. The Lupron afraid, for a year? Yeah. Wow. I'm afraid that it's really going to mess with my hormones because I've always had hormonal problems. Well, it's going to mess with them, of course. It basically puts you into menopause. Yeah. Um, she had said something about an ADVAC therapy, but all that does is to prevent um, bone deterioration. Yeah, but, but I understand that, but that will that will you you will improve with that. Okay, is that going to make me totally? It's going like, to it's going it, to it affects different women differently. I don't think enough is made of the 
emotional and sexual side effects of hormone therapy like this. But yeah, yeah it's going to have profound effects on you. You need to be prepared for it. And I think it's an excellent therapy for endometriosis. I think it's, if you're really troubled with that, it's an important thing to get under control. Yeah. But it, it's going to have lots of side effects. And so just about anything that happens to you while you're on it, assume it's the Lupron okay. and look for ways to solve those problems. Okay. So is it going to make me, I am an EMT mm-hmm. and I'm afraid that I'm going to get out on a scene and I'm going to lose it. Mm. Well, is that going to be, will that be a problem? It's, will it affect me that way? It can, yeah, people feel overwhelmed emotionally sometimes when they're on okay. the phone. But it, just be prepared, that's all. Just uh, it, it doesn't mean you're going to be decompensating emotionally. Okay. How but it's going to affect you. How's the EMT work treating you? Um, it's a little stressful. Um, guys dig chicks in uniforms, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> nah, not really. Mm. No, some of them do. Most of them do. No. No. You'd, you'd be surprised out here. You'd yeah, uh, we're here's what here's what guys dig. If you're a chick and you're just halfway decent and you have a a job, <laughs> guys are like really amazed by it. Like uh, you know what I'm talking about. Like once in a while you walk in their office and there's a hot looking chick and she comes walking by and she's carrying something and you're like, no, you, you know think what? to yourself, you're yeah, hot. What are you doing working? No, 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 no. I could see where that any girl that's working. Turns me on. Yeah. I mean, yeah. No, I like th- there that is too. that too, but I think that, that uh, there is that phallic female thing that guys are into sometimes. That, that well, this is... Woman, this... Woman, an armed woman who's in control. Kind of but but you know, know what this is? This is this takes what we were talking about, which is a woman who's working, mm-hmm. attractive woman who's working, and it takes it a step further. I mean, mm-hmm. it's now official. You ain't, you, you ain't the boss's daughter. You got the uniform. You're there. It's almost blue collar when you have the uniform, and that's when it becomes like flash dance. Oh, shut up with that no, puss. No, I think you. you get close to the Xena syndrome with this, which is like a woman armed. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I, a warrior woman is what that, that goes That works, towards. too. But, I understand. But, two different things. Yeah. Yeah. But, but when, you see, when you see a woman, whether it's a cop, a fireman, or an EMT, and she's in a uniform, it's, consi- it's like a blue collar job. I mean, to me... It's 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 like like I said it's like flash dance. You saw some chick who was a coal miner and a five, <laughs> just a five. But she was a coal miner. You'd be like, oh my god, what is she doing? What do you what's going on? And then you'd become amazingly attracted to her. But if you saw her out of her uniform and sitting around and not working, she'd just be a five. You're right. Thank you. So what was her deal? She want to know about she want to put pleats in her uniform or what? What she want? I forget. Okay. Let's talk to uh, Carrie, who's uh, 24. Carrie? Good evening. Good evening. Um, about a year and a half ago, I took some ecstasy um, twice, uh, like 12 hours apart. And that evening, I started getting a pain in my elbow. And since then, I've had um, constant pain in both shoulders, uh, both elbows, both wrists. Um, I have a rash in my hands. Um, have you seen someone about this? Yeah. Um, yeah. What do you uh, think it is? Well, I, at first, I, I, you know, I thought, well, that couldn't have been ecstasy. So um, I went to the doctor. I was working in an office at the time, so I figured maybe it was carpal tunnel. Mm-hmm. Uh, they did, they did tests. I told them about the ecstasy too, and they're like, nah. Um, they'd done tests. They did nerve tests. I was in therapy. Physi- and, physical therapy. Yeah. Okay. And okay. All I get from you is depressed. Yeah, you sound we, pretty we depressed to me too. So I, whatever it is, and certainly XC can contribute to that, but you just sound profoundly depressed, so there is that. No, I'm, I'm a happy guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, You're top of the world, well, looking we, down we, on creation. We wouldn't miss that. Yeah. Right, go ahead. So what happened with the workup? Just give us the upshot. Uh, with work? No, the, uh, the work up. The work up. Um, well, you know, it's still the same as it what was. What they finally but... decide it was. They they didn't determine it was anything. You know, after the nerve test, they're like, we don't know what this is. Okay. They had me on anti-inflammatories and whatnot. Um. But uh, you know, it's still the same as it was when uh, uh, it first. Is it, it both first. both arms? Yeah. Are you uh, having problems sleeping? Uh no. You know, I mean, it's I've just gotten used to it. You know. Do you have uh how's uh, how's work going? It's fine. I'm I'm at another job where I'm not typing quite as much, but. Uh, does anybody use the term fibromyalgia? Uh, yeah, I've thought about that. Or reflex sympathetic dystrophy syndrome? Has that been discussed? RS, no. RSDS? I've talked to people about that. The doctors I've talked to. All right. Well, those are the two kinds of things that uh, that present like this. And I, I don't really think it has much to do with the ecstasy, except that when one is depressed, one is certainly predisposed to overwhelming physical complaints. And 
Uh, how, how is this uh, fibromyalgia the uh, latest incarnation of uh, chronic fatigue syndrome? It's, it's a spinoff. Yeah. It's like Maud is to all the family. Right. <laughs> True. Uh, Jake, enjoy that because it comes up with one of those <laughs> every year. four years. One, one a year. One a year. One a year, maybe. Oh, I feel special. You were here. Yeah. Yeah. Were here. You can say you're here when Drew said something entertaining. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This is once in a while we got to figure out something. See, people get depressed. And then they lose their energy, but they don't want to call themselves depressed. Well, they, so we have to give them a syndrome, yeah. so they can figure out why it is they're not, well, why they have no. Uh, it, it's a little more complicated. No they they get a sleep disturbance because of the depression, and then they literally get these very severe muscle pains from the sleep disturbance. Have you ever gone like three days without sleeping? You know, you ache all the time. You can't. It's hard to move around. No. Have you ever had that? No. I get that like crazy. No, I get uh, very irritable, and my uh, eyes hurt a lot. And my uh, brain doesn't work uh, as uh, poorly as it normally does. But uh, my, uh, no, never never anything physical. No, that's that's always the least of my worries with my uh, lack of sleep. Mm. It's more, uh, I feel like one of these ecstasy callers when I don't get enough sleep. Mm -hmm. I hear my voice echoing in my own head. And ironically, I'm always doing something like, uh, you know, Talking. Howard Stern yeah. or some radio junket or in front of something. So it's the worst possible time for your brain not to work. But that's... Uh, that's the story of my life. My brain probably works the best uh, late night here where we're on the radio when uh, no one listens and no one cares. Lenzig? Yep. Who? You're 16? Yep. Uh, what do you want? Um, I recently moved away from the town I was living in. Like, I'm two and a half hours away, and I have no way to get any pot or mushrooms, so pretty much I have to quit. Mm-hmm. And I just want to know if I'm going to go through any withdrawals or anything like that. How, how, not from the mushrooms. How much pot are you smoking every day? Uh, I used to smoke at least like five or six joints a day. Yeah, you're going to feel pretty irritable. You're going to get shaky, have mood swings, crave. Your sleep's going to be messed up for several weeks. Yeah. Uh, sweaty, uncomfortable. It's just going to be kind of miserable. Okay. It's like coming off alcohol, very similar to that. Did you uh, you move to Bakersfield? Yeah. Jeez, you couldn't just uh, move to Beirut or Hell or someplace uh <laughs> Someplace where we had a little chance. I wish. Yeah. What a what an asshole that Bakersfield is, huh? Yeah. Boring. Yeah. It's worse than boring. <laughs> boring would be would be sort of neutral. This is bad. As far as that girl talking about doing only a half eighth of mushrooms, that's probably only like four pieces of popcorn. That's how much that is. Yeah, I know. I called her a lightweight though. <laughs> yeah. You caught that, right, bro? Yeah. All right. Like that girl is really. Getting the ire of, of the world. Huh? Yeah, that, how that, dare she have brain, you know, brain damage after three kernels of popcorn? <laughs> well, let me tell you, I uh, the first time I did mushrooms, uh, me and the wheeze uh, put back a few shrooms, and uh, his crazy cousin Michelle came by. Uh, maybe yeah. I shouldn't talk about her. She Come teaches on. school now, but uh, Come on. out with it. Anyway, she had kind of a bad trip, you know. Yeah. Started spazzing out a little bit. And there's nothing. Chicks are such lightweights, you know. They just, they, I'm, I'm really, they really have weaker brains. I mean, let's face it. A, a couple caps of mushrooms, and they get all paranoid and weird, you know. And want to call their mom. Yeah. Exactly. And that it, happened my first mushroom time. Really? My some friend Leslie some wanted chicks, to call her mom. Some, some chick spazzed on yeah, you. Yeah. And there's nothing worse than when you're trying to get groovy <laughs> and somebody spazzing. You're trying yeah. to get groovy. You really are. You're, you're really. You're, you're like looking at flies, going, "Oh my God, I can see his. I can hear his wings beating." No, it wasn't a fly. It was a bee. A bee. I beg your pardon. Dare you? The air. I can see the air moving around. I the can bee's see wing. the ripples around the bee's wings, like it was in water. It was good. Listen, the wheeze and I were were having a love fest uh, on the uh, floor of his. I uh, do not want to hear about. This. I beg your pardon. No, nothing sexual, but I mean, we were really enjoying our our mellow high, and then uh, this chick has to start freaking out, you know, and they start getting spazzy, and they start going places. I got to get out, you know, they start heading out for the street, and then you're really high, but you got to chase them, <laughs> and then you're all bummed out. There should be insurance for this. You know what I mean? Bad trip insurance. Some <laughs> some some broad freaks because she got some bad uh, mushrooms. How about a bad trip service? Yeah, where they just come over and kill collect, her. Collect them, yeah. I just collect them. Yeah. They do, do the chasing for you. I, I just, here's the deal. By then, it's it's over. I want insurance. I want to be compensated for this. You could, if you had somebody chasing you, you could just sit back and laugh. Enjoy it. No, but you'd have to phone them, and you have to wait for them to show up. Yeah, that's true. What I'm saying is, is I want a new bag of drugs <laughs> and like $180 I and see. a six-pack. I see. 
and 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 a date in the future when I can get high again and be be assured that there'll be no trouble this time. That's, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, it's just, uh, nothing worse. And listen, you chicks, you chicks will be drinking wine coolers. That's about it. Don't start getting into the drugs because you always freak. You get weird, and uh, one one it's it's one of two reactions to the drugs. Either the uh, top comes off and you just uh, start start lying around the block and you start blowing guys, or you just freak out and start running in the street and want to call your mom. So and getting all paranoid. So it's all going to be bad think for you. Bartles and James. Think three and a half to four wine coolers. Okay. That's what you chicks should be thinking. And uh, leave the serious drugs to the fellas, right? And, and you can leave a little in the bottom of each wine cooler. You don't have to finish. So. Right, right. But it's just that little foam on the top. Yeah. And have right. a sip. Is no it not the know. case that the guys are giving them the drugs, though, expecting the former reaction that the top's going to come off? And uh, they're so bummed out when they get the latter reaction of the not, running but, a not, circle? Not so much the mushroom dudes, because the mushroom guys know that... Uh, there's not going to be any sex going on. They just want to see the bees' wings. Right. Yeah. And in peace. Yeah. Uh. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. Then you see the Lee Press-On nail <laughs> commercial. And you're sitting there, and you're watching people stick plastic extensions, red extensions, onto the end of their fingers, and you're high as a kite on mushrooms, and you're going, this is a very strange society we're living in. The, the female, female species. species tries to be more attractive to the male species by sticking long pieces of blood red <laughs> plastic to the end of their fingers as if they were bloody claws, you know? You're just watching this, and, and then, uh, then a commercial come on, comes on for monster trucks, and they're showing trucks smashing cars and the crowds cheering, you know, and you think, i got to get out of this place. <laughs> it's a little too freaky for me. i got to call my mom. Yeah, you're right. All right, we'll take a little break. We'll be back. Love line will be right back. So get your problems ready. 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 Love line is brought to you by Trojan, America's most trusted condom for over 80 years. Everybody, love line. I'm Adam. There's Dr. Drew over there. Jay Blumenfield is our guest tonight. He's a documentary uh, filmmaker. He did a uh, documentary called Small Town Ecstasy. It's going to premiere Sunday night on HBO, 10 o'clock. And listen here, kiddies. I know you screwballs want to play uh, video games and uh, get high all day, but. You should really get into uh, documentaries, hmm. and 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 just in general, just things that mix information. The History Channel. Yeah, no, I know you're not gonna. I know I'm sounding like uh, Squaresville here, but here's what I'm saying: a lot of people who listen to the show, and including myself, have difficulty sitting down, focusing, reading books, studying, going to the library. Doing the traditional stuff that people like Dr. Drew can do. I mean, I, I don't have that gene. I never did. I never could. But yet, I was able to learn a certain amount of things in life. And that's through just listening to talk radio, watching documentaries, watching 60 Minutes, watching a little History Channel. I was able to essentially educate myself, or at least give, give people the appearance that I have some education more than being a ceramics major and barely making it through high school, never taking, failing driver's ed, never taking algebra and all that kind of stuff. You see what I'm saying? You can, you can, you can you absorb can information. Way. If you, yeah. Yeah. Well, I just mean. No, I know what you mean. What, what's wrong with absorbing a little information while you're being entertained? Yeah. You know, in, entertainment well, does not always have to come in the form of plate spinning or pornography. You can actually be entertained because you're being interested in absorbing knowledge. I couldn't agree more. And I, I wish I wish more more people would sort of find that form of mm -hmm. uh, entertainment. I, I find those uh, I find shows like 60, 60 Minutes very entertaining because mm -hmm. it's all true and it's all information and mm -hmm. it's all interesting. And the same with these uh, documentaries that are on HBO. They're they're amazingly entertaining. And I think people steer away from them sometimes, or at least some of our younger listeners might steer away from them just because they're a documentary. Tara? Yes? 
You Tara or Tara? Tara. Good times. You're uh, 17? Yeah. What's up? Well, um, I'm a server, or not a server, I'm going to be a server. I'm a cashier at a restaurant in Fountain Valley. Mm-hmm. Peter North. Mm-hmm. You know who that is, right? The decorator, porn yeah. star. Oh, yeah. Jay's next project. Yeah. He, um, he comes in regularly, and he's... He o always orders, like, to-go items and stuff, so I always take care of him. And mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of his films, like, my ex-boyfriend kind of got off on it, so... Um, you, 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 your ex-boyfriend showed you films with him in it? Yeah, he kind of, well, he kind of had a thing, like, he used to, like, watching it, and it used to get him off. But oh, I, I see you, this guy all He watched time. porn? Back up. Hold on, this, this ex-boyfriend of yours liked watching Peter North? Not, no, not Peter North, but he liked kind of watching porn. Okay. He did? Yeah. Shocking. I never heard of a young male enjoying that that's, activity. That's a weird guy. <laughs> How old was he? What's he's, that? Um, he's 17. 17-year-old uh -huh. male watching pornography. Mm -hmm. No, no. I okay. refuse to believe it. True, it's true. No. Drew, wake up and smell the coffee. This is what's going on today. Oh, my God, am I out of it. Where is this happening? Uh, <laughs> Fountain well, Valley. It, it, it used An another city named strangely it used to be somewhere else, but now it's in our neighborhoods. Scary. Yeah. Next thing you know, masturbation. No, oh yes. No. Oh yes. Oh, no, no. oh yes. We'll get a handle on that. Don't worry. Oh, I don't know. We'll get a handle on that. <laughs> Adam, Fountain Valley. Could yeah. there be? Could there be a city flatter, valleyless? Right. Yeah. Well, maybe. Maybe that's it. Maybe. It's like Fountain Prairie. Yeah. Yeah. Where? Where's Valley come in? Where's the Valley? Fountain Valley. It's a good good question. I'll tell you. Hold on a well, second. Well, it's next to Hawaiian Gardens, so I mean, they had to figure it out. Yeah, it. here's where the next here's the next here's the next documentary. I have this plan. I got plans. I'm going to straighten out this whole goddamn country. But one of the things is, I don't like people. I don't like the names of these cities. I don't like I don't like the fact that Hawaiian Gardens is a dump and named Hawaiian Gardens. Sun Valley. I don't, I don't like that <laughs> Sun Valley is a dump and named Sun Valley. And I don't like the fact that uh, Fountain Valley doesn't have a valley in it. <laughs> I don't think you can just willy nilly name name your territory whatever you whatever you like. Do you know what I mean? No, I'm with you. I'm so, with you. Right. You you have yeah. and as furthermore, I know a lot of people that move from back east, they lived in Boston and stuff, they're coming out they're coming out to California, they're getting into the entertainment business and they go, Hey, Hawaiian Gardens, yeah, I'll get an apartment there, that sounds good. Because it sounds a hell of a lot nicer than Encino. When in reality there could be nothing no two <laughs> cities further apart, right? I'm with you. I want everything numbered. That's my plan. Numbers. And let these, let these, uh, let these idiots in Hawaiian Gardens start fighting. Because Hawaiian Gardens, when, and you're not Hawaiian Gardens anymore. You're 147. Well, let's give them a number and a grade. No, just, just a number. Just number on. Yeah, every state will just uh, number the cities. All right. And, uh, and they can just hammer it out. And now all of a sudden, you've got some motivation. You see, you want to, your Hawaiian Gardens, you're not resting on your laurels anymore. You're 147. You got to start working it a little you bit. Make 147 the the place to be. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no. You you got to get your number up. You got to see if you can crack double digits. You see what I'm saying? I, I see, see because these numbers will shift around. Uh, I'll, I'll assign them every year. Give everyone motivation. Get the whole town behind. It'll be like a Whoville. All right. All right. Thank you. So Tara, uh, what, what about Peter? Peter North. North what yeah. do you want? What do you want? Okay. Well, no, he's been hitting on me, and he made a pass at me, and I knew that. I knew that if I went after it, that I totally could have, well, I could have had sex with him, and, like, I, I yeah. really want to. I, oh, my God. It's, wow. I just, it would just be amazing. I know it would. And, but I'm really nervous just because I'm not real experienced. Like, liar, liar. 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 Whore. Yeah. Liar. Whore. And you know it. Bogus. Bogus. I, Your jack-off boyfriend put you up to this. I haven't been, I'm, no, I'm not real promiscuous. I just, but I can't help it. Like, every time he comes in. What film did you watch with him in it? I don't even know the names. Why not? I I'm sorry, I didn't pay that much attention. Do pornos have names? Huh? Yeah, she would know. Bogus. Well, let's let's talk to her though. She'd know. What, what what would what would this do for you? What would what? What would this do for you? What would what do if I if I slept with him? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Change my life. I don't why is it so appealing to you? Change your life. Change your life why at would, why having did, a why two did, gallons of jizz so dumped easy? on you. <laughs> Please. Yeah, why would you want to be with a guy that, uh, you know, you, you worry, I'm sure, I think, suspect you'd worry about STDs and someone who's been with lots and lots of partners, and what, what would it do for you? Not going to be a relationship, right? Well, I'd, obviously, it's not going to be a relationship. I yeah. just... 
Listen, I don't know. I'm just curious. When I used to work at the uh, an Arby's, uh, Ron Jeremy used to come in, and the same thing happened. Okay, you wanted to go for him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has that. Effect. How can you resist yeah. Ron? <laughs> no, I didn't. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. But but this is, well, the reason I'm exploring this. I mean, maybe it's bogus. I, I, I don't know. But but is that I, I, I'm always intrigued. Put your boyfriend on the phone, would you? Oh no, I don't have a boyfriend anymore. He is my ex. Intrigued by why why women just suddenly go for like some a, a celebrity or some guy in a public a public figure, as though it's separate from their usual sort of right menu of behaviors you know what i mean all of a sudden they just throw themselves at one person at one occasion like some rock star or something like yeah. and then, then it's like it didn't happen yeah you know what i mean yeah I, i've always wanted to question a woman who's having that experience and that's kind of what she's describing well let me uh let me hypothesize and say that there's probably more women would like to have a fantasy sort of one night stand than society would let them have you know I think don't let them do it i think they do what are you saying? I think a lot of them do that. No, they do, but... How, how, how did Wilt Chamberlain sleep with 20,000 women? And by the way, not one of them steps forward and say, oh, that was me, I was one of the 20,000. Yeah. It's like it didn't happen. Yeah, well, probably wasn't 20,000. Well, you know what I mean? Uh, how, about, yeah. how about Geraldo or whatever? The not, nobody steps up and goes, oh, yeah, yeah, me. Geraldo, what a dynamite individual. Yeah. Listen, what's wrong with him? <laughs> <laughs> you realize that people don't really like him and he should just stay home. But listen, there's a guy I'd like to beat his ass. I'd like to beat that Geraldo's ass. He's coming on next week. I'd love to. Do. He is? Yeah. I'd challenge him to a boxing match. Okay, listen. Here's here's what I'm saying. I think a lot of women have have one night stand fantasies, but 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 they have a more of a fantasy form than well, than an actual one. They don't like the notion of a one night stand, but they do like the the notion of a one night stand with a celebrity. Right, and, throw, and it's they, fantasy. Right, and, and a, a rock star. Take a rock star. That's okay, more and example. and I don't think I don't think I know society is used to women having one night stands, and we accept it. But I don't think they can rationalize doing it with a dude they work with or a dude they go to school with. Right, but they can rationalize doing it with a rock star. You don't think it is some primitive primate thing that these are the alpha males that they just present to and. You know, collecting some genes, and they can't contain that old primitive impulse. I I would uh, I wouldn't say that's a bad theory. And I'm sure that that factors into it. And then they go back to the getting the guys who need to be the child rearers, right? To, to raise these things. I think I think there it's it's a, it doesn't really count. If that's it's what rock, I'm saying, yeah, yeah. it's just it's some weird. No, Drew, don't it, don't dis don't but, agree with Jay. He's crapping on your theory. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm saying, but I'm saying it comes from. I agree with, psychologically, it doesn't count, and it fits in sort of their self concept that way, but. The biology is some primitive thing left over from our primate past. Well, whoever can argue with that, Drew always falls back on that. It's very, very spurious. Um, <laughs> Jay's next documentary is called uh, Why Drew's Wrong Almost All the Time. It's going to come out on uh, Cinemax in about uh, three weeks. All right, Drew, you all right? You done pounding? No, I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> just think, I'm just thinking of the name of that documentary. I'm trying to figure that out. All right, we're going to take ourselves uh, a little break, and then we're going to come back, and we're really going to get to some questions after this. Everybody, love line. I'm uh, Adam Carolla. And that is uh, Doctor Drew over there. Let's uh, keep rocking here. Jay Blumenfield is our uh, guest tonight. Documentary filmmaker, HBO Sunday night. The uh, Ecstasy uh, documentary is on. Mike. Yeah. You're 18. Yeah. What's up um, there, Mr. Personality? <laughs> sorry. That's all right. Um. I just want to know if I want to know two questions. Um, if you use dental dam on a girl, a dental dam? Yeah. Yeah. Will, will they be able to feel anything? Well, or do you do you feel anything when when you wear a condom? Yeah. Same idea. But like, I don't know, would it like move around and like I get to do anything? I don't know. Well, okay. That's the question. But yeah, I'm, well, uh, I mean, look, it's it's not as good as not using one. I, I think it's a fairly ridiculous item that. I guess society thought was fairly ridiculous because it never really caught on. 
But you, you could, uh, you know, you, if you used it properly and worked it properly, they could get some. Listen, you can give a woman an orgasm outside of her pants. Yeah. I mean, you can't, and neither can I or anyone I know. But <laughs> it's, I, it's happened. I've Peter, seen Peter movies. North can, Peter North, yeah. Hey, you rub a, you give a woman that uh, eagle death claw is what I call. It. No, it's a sort of karate type move. I give them where you know rub. Yeah, they could have an orgasm if they like you. <laughs> okay. What's your other That's question? You know, if a woman likes um, you, you can give them an orgasm outside their clothing. It's a pretty good sign. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, is there any way you can get tested for STDs without like paying for it, or do you have to always pay for them? Is there any way you can I imagine go to certain county facilities and maybe some Planned Parenthoods, but that's about it. Well, yeah, I mean, there's there's clinics and yeah. stuff you can go to that'll that'll take care of that stuff. I would think. Hate yeah. Street. Yeah. Hate, the free clinic yeah. on Hate. Yeah, except for he's in Tampa, Florida. <laughs> so, I mean, it might be free, but by the time you pay for airfare and everything, Hitchhike. hotel <laughs> accommodations, <laughs> gratuity and all that kind of stuff, yeah. they start to add up. Jose? Yeah. You're 29? Yep. What's up? Oh, man. I've been with my girl for about eight years. And in the uh, beginning, I used to cheat on her all the time. And, you know, I never had a problem with ever getting an erection. Well, I took about a year straight without cheating on her. And time went by, and I went out, started meeting other girls. We'd be off and on in the eight years, seven years we've been together. And... Every time it came down to it, I just couldn't get an erection with these other girls, and I don't, I don't understand what's up with that, you know. Well, maybe you feel, God forbid, some guilt at being apart from your girlfriend, or remorse, or maybe you yeah. miss her. And it's horrible because I'm sitting there with these girls, and I mean, I'm. Did I just talk? Was, was this thing on? Sure, sure. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Drew. Uh, again, maybe you feel some guilt, the remorse, or maybe you actually miss your girlfriend. You're actually connected to her and feel bad about what you're doing. I know, but my I, penis doesn't work. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been like such a player for so many I know, years. Maybe you're changing. And see, that's and she she doesn't understand that. And I try to explain to her that I tried to be with other girls and I can, and she still thinks I'm this dirty dog. And you know, she just doesn't she doesn't want to accept that I try to explain to her and tell her that. It must be very reassuring to her to know that you've. Uh, yeah been uh, in the throes of sex with someone and oh, your penis doesn't work. Maybe I, they're blowing me, they got their thumb up my ass, nothing, I'm <laughs> no, telling nothing you, happens. you gotta believe me. Boy, it's, uh, so, yeah. She says I'm romantic, tell me again. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just trying to explain this because, you know, like I said, we've been off and on, and, you know, the times we've been off. Yeah. Right, alright, but okay. are you on now? Yeah, we're on now. Alright, well good, you're on now, and, and does your penis work with her? Oh, my penis works with her. Alright, that's all you need. Yeah, you think your penis is like a divining rod. Just uh, it, it's it's showing you where you need, what direction you need to go. Follow it. Or do you think uh, Jose oh knows what a divining rod is? I don't think Jose knows put money what a penis it. is. All right, here's the money. Hold on a second. Where's the money? Jose? Yeah. Hold on a second. No, I'm but I'm better right. you. See. Now divining rod, venison, veal, or veal. Uh, what do you say? One for o one for, for three. O for three. O for o for or one for three. One for. Okay. One for. I'm one going for. one for two. I'm one for. All right, Jose. Yeah. Quick quiz, buddy. Yeah. Um, divining rod. Do you know what that is? Divining rod? Yeah. Yes. I mean, yeah, I know what that is. What does that do? It, it uh, functions in bed and makes it gives me pleasure. The divining rod. Oh, my rod? No. Okay. No. Okay. <laughs> Let's go over one. Okay. No one. Let, next question on our survey. Okay. Venison. What kind of meat would venison be? Venison? I have no idea. All right. Give yeah. a guess. Yeah. Give a guess what yeah. kind of meat? Yeah. yeah. Uh, afraid he's going to get it accidentally. Uh, some type of vagina meat? I yeah, don't know. There we go. All right, <laughs> vagina meat. And last last but not least, uh, what what kind of meat is veal? Kind veal? Of, yeah. Veal. Kind of animal. It's, uh, I believe it's out of a, uh, uh, not a sheep, but a sheep? Yeah. No, no. Yes? Sheep? Sheep. Sheep, you're going with sheep? Yeah. Okay. Thank That's you, Jose. True. Jose? Yeah. You have a good have, night. You don't have kids, do you? No, no, no kids. Okay. Good. Okay, good. good. No kids. And if you do, no homeschooling. Oh. No. <laughs> Whatever you're doing. Whatever you do, no homeschool. Over three. I don't know. I gotta. I gotta believe that Anderson tipped it with the uh, sheep sound effect. Uh, sound effect. Although he did say he was going for to say sheep, sheep before the ba. Yeah, you're right. I think if he hadn't said sheep, he would have gone for goat. Vagina meat. <laughs>
Rod? Rod? Did you say Rod? Well, it's my penis. <laughs> Twining Rod? Rod? Yeah, what about Lightning Rod? <laughs> oh penis? God. All right. Uh, Kevin? Hello. You're 21. What's up? Ah, uh, I get random erections. It kind of pisses me off. Mm-hmm. Like, I'll yeah. be at work, and I work out in the shop at Walmart, and just random... Yeah. We have believe. no sympathy. Well, I, I have no sympathy him. anyway. Oh, who cares? You, you, wear should, jeans. you should enjoy this because you'll lose it soon enough. Wear jeans. Look at poor Jose. <laughs> Can't even uh, cheat on his bitch anymore because his <laughs> penis won't behave and you're wasting good boners at Walmart. <laughs> Look, I, I've said this many times. You wear jeans, and if you want to kill your boner, pull it out, pull it down, flip it up against your belly, and then it just sort of kills it. There's nowhere for it to go, there's nothing to push on anymore. You see, Drew disagrees, but one time we really, I really explained it in painful detail, right. and he knows what I'm talking about now, right, Drew? Yeah. Yeah. Melissa? Yes? You're 22? Yes. What's up? Um, well, basically, um, I started doing drugs when I was about 18, mm -hmm. um, due to an ex-boyfriend that I had at the time. He got me involved in these drugs. And um, I've done a lot, and I'm kind of curious as to see what the side effects might be. I've probably done at least 50 to 60 hits of acid, probably 20 to 30 hits of ecstasy. I smoke pot every day, even still now. Well, the, the pot is going to be your biggest problem because that, that's addictive. Uh -huh. But the uh, I would expect the other drugs to be giving you symptoms of uh, sort of agoraphobia and social phobia. Is you having trouble going out in crowds and that kind of thing yet? Um, well, I'm... I'm actually uh, running a house with my boyfriend that I've been dating for about a year and a half now, and we're we're having a lot of problems getting along and communicating. And are you having trouble going out and being in social environments? And what's you not going? All right, you asked me the question. Love yeah. line recreation. Go yeah. ahead. Are you having trouble going out outdoors and feeling anxiety in social situations? I ran a house with my boyfriend, and we've been having troubles. Right. All right. Melissa? Yes. You uh but what about the question Drew asked you? Yes. I don't ever go out so I can't really sit here and say that I, I have a social disorder because I don't know, I don't really go out. I sit at home most of the time. Um I'm Wouldn't, unemployed currently. Right. Wouldn't that be sort of a so I mean aren't you Sign. aren't you kinda of making Drew's point when he's asking you about being uh, having agoraphobic yeah, and staying at home, having trouble going out, going out in the crowds and stuff, and you saying I don't know because I don't go out. <laughs> you kind of. It's not that I don't want to. I think it's because my boyfriend isn't motivated as well. He also smokes pot. Okay. And um, you know, to be honest, if I go out, he kind of gets upset. He gets he, upset if uh, you go jogging. No, not necessarily like go jogging or exercising, but if I was to go out, maybe dancing or... All right, well, don't go out dancing. I, I didn't say dancing. Was, go out and get some exercise. Listen, you got a whole lot of stuff. Forget the just terribly dysfunctional, abusive relationship you're in. You're addicted to pot. You've, you've exposed your brain to potential neurotoxins. It's just a bad situation. You know, just take a look at this maybe make some change, huh? How? Uh, what about a 12-step program? You go to MA. Go to MA. All okay. right. Get, get out of there. Get, well, listen, you, you, very, need, you need some relationships away from this primary Very fast. Divining rod. Do you know what that is? No. Uh, what kind of uh, what kind of meat is veal? She'll get it. <laughs> Come on. Veal. Veal. Okay. What kind of meat? So, so, what kind of meat is veal? Um, I couldn't tell you, to be honest. You don't know what kind of animal it comes from? Um, cow. There we go. Yeah. How about venison? W what kind of cow? Um, I don't know. Okay. Give her the cow. She got it. Don't, don't I don't know. I don't know. That's not veal. And uh, venison, what kind of animal? Uh, geez. Okay. I'm guessing a cow, maybe a pig. Pig. Okay. Pig. All right. Now, listen, baby. Go to, uh, go to CA. Okay. I mean, uh, M -A, I mean, M A, M A. M -A. M -A. Yeah, go, go to something with an A in it and get the hell out of the house. <laughs> yeah. Women, you can't leave the house. Well, I can't go dancing. But <laughs> what about shopping? We'll take a break. We'll be back. Okay, so I know there's nothing wrong with me. So what's up? So I was like you, and I used to think that these Datelines were totally cheesy. Why can't I meet anybody? But I tried everything else and thought, what the hell? So I called the Dateline and actually met a cool guy. I called the Dateline and I hooked up with some cool people. Believe it or not, other normal people are out there looking too. 877-889-DATE. Loveline. 1-800-LOVE-191. We'll be right back.
taken here on a Sunday night. I want to thank uh, Jay Blumenfield for coming in and uh, being a good, solid guest. And uh, a hell of a listener during the commercials, while Drew and I uh, spout off. <laughs> That's what you like best, isn't it? Someone, I like somebody someone, to actually hear us. Someone who can hold still yeah. and listen while I scream about uh, what's going wrong with society. HBO movie Small Town Ecstasy. Sunday night. Sunday night. And uh, so help me Christ, I will be uh, watching this. I will TiVo it, and I will watch it when I get home, and I will report back on it Monday. I and true. expect to report. I hope you do the same. Yes. I hotel room in North Carolina. That's good radio, with that nod. So until next time, this Adam. Oh, I want to thank Anderson and, uh, and Lauren and Tara, don't call me Tara, and uh, what the hell, Damien. Damien. Yeah, I want to thank all the people doing a great job. Uh, I want to thank you guys for being so great. Thank you. Thank you. So until next time, Adam Crawford, Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Marijuana is the flame, heroin is the fuse, LSD is the bomb. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins-Ingold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.